All right, here's another viewer question. Actually had several questions on this. New Jersey Transit, uh, while the latest reforms seem to have stalled in the legislature, whatever happened to the chief ethics officer and the passenger advocate and the expansion of the board, all were stipulated in the last reform bill a year or so ago. None are in place right now. You used to say you'd fix it or it would kill you. You're alive and kicking, uh, but still work to do over at NJ Transit. Yeah, I, and, and David, fair point, and that, those are all um, in process. So I've got no news to report, but we have not given up on any of those. But when I say we're going to fix NJ Transit if it kills me, uh, I, I challenge you to walk up to somebody standing on a platform and ask them, it, it, when you judge whether or not NJ Transit is working or not, uh, do you include the size of their board of directors? Uh, you, you, no one's going to say that. So with all due respect to that, and again, I'm, I'm not making light of it, but what folks want is they want the train or bus to show up on time, to get them there reliably, to have a positive, healthy, safe, reliable customer experience. And we have used the pandemic uh, to double down on a lot of stuff associated with what I just said, whether it's new green equipment, whether it's more engineering classes, whether it's improving the apps, work on stations, the stuff that people live every day. We wanna make sure that when we're back in business and people are taking buses and trains in, in a little bit more of a normal uh, pattern like they used to, that they say, you know what, this experience is a lot better than it used to be. I know this is a little simplistic, but uh, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being job done, where are you, do you think? I'd say we inherited a one, and I'd say we're probably a six, seven. All right, here's another viewer question. Although it may sound like it comes from the Jersey Press Corps, it does not. Um, Ludlow asks, why does this administration keep rejecting Oprah requests? It's only one example. Others include fast tracking the budget without public review, et cetera. The lack of transparency from your administration is stunning, he says. And well, when will you ever take live questions? What are you scared of? Well, Ludlow, he is taking your questions right now uh, and he is doing it live. So uh, you're yep. probably gonna be watching this on tape, but he is answering these questions live. Yeah, I, question. appreciate, I appreciate your defense there. Um, sure. We, we, we Many of my colleagues in the press corps have expressed similar concerns about Oprah and FOIA requests. Okay. It takes way longer than it should. Okay, so, so a couple of things. We take live questions for Ludlow. This is for Ludlow, David, not for you, because I know you know the answer. We take live questions from the press, from the public in town halls, including virtual ones, and just as Ludlow was asked, when, you, when, when shows like this take viewers' questions. Yep. Uh, people are not afraid to walk up to me on the street, I promise you. Uh, uh, so with, with all due respect, I don't accept the premise. Uh, as it relates to Oprah, we take that very seriously. I think what you're seeing is a combination because of a pandemic on both sides of this. You've got an overwhelming amount of interest in information, and you've got a lot of challenging working circumstances among, um, among our staff and team. But we, we take those very seriously. Uh, it may be slower than people like for the reasons I just articulated. As it relates to the budget, I would say a little bit with all due respect, um, the, the, the part that I would want Ludlow and others to focus on is we, we presented our budget in late February. It got signed in late June. So in that four month period, there were dozens of hearings, uh, frequent updates on revenue forecasts that were moving around, um, a lot of good back and forth interaction. And the budget that I ultimately signed, I believe was uh, had a 14 page difference from the one I presented in February. Now, would I be open-minded to a longer period uh, between a bill being presented, whether it's a budget or other bill, and it being um, uh, voted on? I suspect the legislative leadership without putting words in their mouth, we would, would also join me in being open-minded to ways that we can make the process even, even better, including that, and everyone's focused, I know Ludlow's question is focused on that last that last moment uh, when the final budget is presented and voted on. Um, so, would I be open to, to, to making that a, a, a longer, more open process? Absolutely. But you'd have to admit, Governor, that it shouldn't take weeks 
to get a copy of a resume or the cost of local elections or state state costs of elections. That shouldn't take weeks to get, right? Yeah, I, I can't I can't um, agree with you only because I, I, I don't want to imply that we're sitting on stuff because I don't right. think we are. I just don't think we are. All right, let, let's move on then. Uh, here's another question. In January 21, you projected over-the-counter cannabis sales would become a reality in late summer or early fall. Colorado's been doing this for over six years, so it's not like the CRC doesn't have a model to follow. Uh, the question is, will we see uh, cannabis sales in late uh, summer or early fall? And if not, why not? Listen, we, Colorado's been at it, but so have other states, and no one state has done it completely right. So I would say with respect to the premise, uh, our commission is working day and night as we speak to make sure we get it as right as we can, uh, including on the important dimensions like equity. Um, and so this is complicated. Uh, and so I don't know late summer or fall. I do believe that the medical dispensaries, as long as they can prove that they have no supply issue for their patients, uh, I think they'll be in the adult use retail business. Uh, I hope not too long in the future. I think they'll get there before we have separate stand-up adult use retail establishments, but we will get there and we'll get there. This is one, particularly as it relates to equity, uh, this is one where it's far more important to get it right than to get it fast. That's not to say that we're sitting on our hands or letting grass grow, no pun intended, uh, but uh, getting it right is really important on this one. All right, Amy asks, uh, the anti-detention bill, S3361, is still awaiting your signature. It's something that you've supported in the past. When can New Jerseyans expect the bill to be signed? Yeah, I don't, I don't have any news to, to break on that. We got several hundred bills at the end of June, and so we're chopping through them. All of them, big and small, have to be vetted. Um, and, and, and we've got a, a, an army of folks who do that. Um, Conceptually on bills, I've, I've said in the past, this is something that is in the direction that I like, uh, but I want to with, with, uh, beg Amy's patience and forgiveness here. I don't want to comment on a specific bill that I haven't personally uh, uh, done, done the work on that, that we will ultimately do. All right, a couple of quick questions, short answers, if you will, because I know we're running out of time. Uh, will you support legislation that brings ranked choice voting to New Jersey? It's not one that I've been hugely passionate on. I'm not saying heck no. Uh, it's nothing like in-person early voting that I have strongly supported and we finally at long last have. I'll even put aside the hiccups that New York City had uh, with their board of elections. I'm gonna even put that to the side. I don't have great passion on this one. Am I open-minded? Uh, yes, and I'll leave it at that. All right, so meh. Meh, uh, yes. All right, looks so like a federal get, Getting people turned out to vote, and I don't care if they're Democrats, Republicans, whatever they are, whether they vote for me or not, getting as many people to vote as possible is our obsession in opening democracy up. All right, looks like an infrastructure bill is going to clear Congress. Two questions on that. Governor Cuomo says he's not going to pay New York's share of the Gateway Project. You concerned about that? And what's the top New Jersey specific? infrastructure project gateway is the one that that jumps out off the page it's the biggest in the country and it impacts new jersey commuters rail commuters uh, enormously but there's going to be roads bridges rails tunnels we're the most densely populated state in the nation we have a, a our share a high share of legacy assets it's going to be a lot of singles and doubles and they're going to be game changers uh, this is a huge help to new jersey uh, we, we will get it right uh, with New York. They've been a great partner over the years. They've been a great partner during this pandemic. I'm confident that we'll find a, a good resting place on Gateway. 